Hey guys, Chris from Propel here, and today we're going to be checking out the new Turn Vectron. We've checked out some previous versions of the Vectron, and I guess this one, given the nomenclature they've used before, would be considered the Generation 3, and they got some cool updates, so we're going to go through them. Uh, this one in particular is the S10, but we're also going to talk about the Q9 as well. So the Vectron was initially introduced in 2017, and then they updated it uh, another year or so ago. And this, I guess you could say, is kind of like the Generation 3 version, with just some minor updates, but some that a lot of people were kind of asking for. So I appreciate that they're doing these like running changes. I don't know that I would consider this to be like a 2021 model as like that's what's usually released this time of year, but rather just an update to an already great bike. And the main update to this one is the motor system. Actually, the main update to both of the bikes is the motor system. It went from the Active Line Plus, which is Bosch's 50 newton meter motor, to the Performance Line motor with 65 newton meter. So effectively, you're getting 30% more power and at the same price, which is pretty cool. So the S10 has the Performance Line motor, and then the Q9, which is their slightly more value price uh, Vectron goes from the active line to the active line plus. So the active line motor has 40 newton meters of torque where the active line plus has 50 newton meters of torque. So you get a nice bump there as well. I guess that's a, like a 25% increase in power. And then the S10 gets a 30% increase in power. So I think a lot of people appreciate that. I mean, I guess really the Q9, you're getting a similar bike to the S, the older S10 at a lower price point of $3,200. Uh, this one uh, in particular is $3,700 or $3,699 as they put it. So I guess it'd be good to just talk about what the Vectron is and what makes it so special or what you know makes it that we wanna carry in our shop. So it's a folding bike, it's an electric folding bike and it's one of the few electric folding bikes with the Bosch motor system. And it's just really from my perspective, the best quality folding electric bike on the market. As I said before, they're introduced in 2017, and at that time, I think it was the only uh, Bosch folding electric bike, and it still to this day is the only Bosch folding electric bike in the US specifically, but there might be some other ones in other parts of the world. But Turn uh, is really well qualified to create such a bike because that's really their heritage. Uh, they've been making folding bikes for quite some time and, and really one of the leaders in that space, especially for like performance folding bikes. I mean, they don't really focus as some folding bike companies do on like this like really basic cheap stuff. They, they really focus on making the best quality folding bikes that are available. But they've also expanded their portfolio into some non-folding bikes as well and really getting more and more into electric. I mean, I think they saw so much success with the Vectron. Later, they introduced the GSD, which has been a real smash hit, if I can be so bold as to say that. That bike was recently updated. We did a video recently on that. Uh, and then they introduced the HSD, which is kind of in between the two. It's a little bit of a lighter weight model, not quite as much weight capacity as the GSD or the size of the GSD, but it's, it's a pretty good mix. All those bikes have 20 inch wheels, which is something that seems to be a, a focus for them. It's, they're still all really uh, compact and they have some storable or stowable elements to them, like the HSD and the GSD, as, actually as well as this one, they all can stand up on the rear rack uh, all the bikes have folding handlebars, but this one happens to also fold in half. So that's something uh, unique to the Vectron specifically. And it's why it's considered a folding bike because it can fold in half. But yeah, I've been really impressed by what Turn has been doing. I think they've been in a unique position to do really well in the electric bike space because they have a lot of experience creating complex bikes. Folding bikes and Smaller bikes are kind of challenging to make because you're dealing with a lot of these little details and integrating an electric motor system is really not much different, but I feel like they've done a really good job at that. So um, let's get into a little bit more 
of the specs of this bike in particular. So to start out, I wanted to talk a bit about the frame. This is gonna be the same between the S10 and the Q9, with the exception that the colors are gonna change. For the S10, it's available in this silver color, but also available black with a bronze highlight. The previous version was black with a blue highlight on it, and then the Q9 previously was available in blue, but now it's going to be in a red color. And that's kind of like a glossy metallic red. This, this is like a glossy uh, silver. And then the black is kind of more like a satin finish. I wouldn't say it's specifically matte uh, because it does have just a little bit of a sheen to it. But there's just one frame size, which to some people might be a little bit confusing or troubling, but actually, despite the fact of it just being one frame size, it can fit a wide variety of riders. This is actually one of the go-to bikes that a lot of people seek out if they're on the shorter side, because it can be difficult to find electric bikes for shorter riders, more specifically riders in the low five foot or even potentially below five feet. Part of its ability to fit these different rider heights is due to its telescoping seat pose. So there's actually two different levels to it. At the moment, the top level is pretty much at the top point where it would be acceptable, but there's this minimum insertion point. This seat post is 30.9, so if you ever wanted to swap this out for like a suspension seat post or something like that, you can just get the 30.9 seat post and swap this portion out. But this is the top, port, top part here, and then the bottom can go up even further. Again, you don't want to go past this minimum insertion point, and this lower portion is 34.9, I should mention. If you wanted to get this actually to the lowest point possible, it wouldn't be, um, from, from my side, what I would generally recommend is actually removing the top telescoping part and putting a different size post in here. So you have that, it's 30, 34.9, and it can be difficult to find a post specifically that's 34.9, but you can usually get what's called a shim, and that will allow you to put a smaller diameter seat posts, say like a 31.6, inside of that 34.9 inner diameter hole. So I think there's a really nice feature that the bike has, and it gives a lot of flexibility. So the stem on the bike also gives a lot of flexibility. They have this proprietary stem, it's called the Andro stem, and basically you're able to just open this up here, and you can move to all different sorts of positions. So if you want it to be in a more sporty position, a more forward position like this, uh, you can drop this down. This is really great if you're riding faster, you want to be a little bit more aerodynamic. And it also can give a bit more control balancing your weight uh, be, uh, between the two wheels a little bit better. But as you pull it back towards you, this will put you in a more upright seating position. Not quite as aerodynamic, but it could be more comfortable, especially if you were to add a suspension seat post. And if you're a much taller rider, they do have an option for a longer mast here, so it can go up just a little bit higher. So that's a pretty cool consideration if you're, I'd say maybe over 6'2 or something like that. Or actually, I'd say even if you were, you know, six foot or something like that, and you want to be a bit more upright, having that taller stem will give you that ability. You might be wondering about the reach, like how does that handle between these different rider heights? And one of the benefits to the angle of this uh, seat post is as it goes up higher, it goes back. So as you're taller, it's going to give you a bit more reach. And if you're a shorter rider, uh, you're going to have a little bit less reach there, which is uh, really what you want. The pedals at the moment, they're actually in the right position already. But if not, you want to get them in the nine and three position. I guess you would call it that. The next step would be to lower the saddle. So you're going to put both portions of the saddle all the way down. You can leave it up if you wanted to kind of wheel it around in the folded position, but really depends. If you want to stow it in the most compact way, putting the saddle down would be ideal. Then we're going to take the handlebars and we're going to adjust the position here. You probably want to remember 
what position was most comfortable for you before because when you unfold it, you're going to want to put it back there. But basically, you take the handlebars and you're going to want to move them flat, which is basically having the brake levers uh, perpendicular with the ground. And you'll want the stem all the way in the upright position. Next up will be to actually uh, fold the bike. Um, before uh, folding it, I'm just going to put the kickstand up, get that out of the way. Before I fold the bike, we're going to push this little safety lever here. Just push it forward and open up this latch. And then when you go to fold it, you're going to actually rotate the bike just like so. And then you're going to drop it down. There's, there's little feet on the bottom of the frame here. Uh, so it's well supported in this position. And really what you want to look for is there's a magnetic closure by the rear wheels. And so this is locked in place. There is some adjustment to that magnetic closure, I should mention. And if you're finding that it's not, you know, clamping correctly, that might need to be adjusted and it could get pushed out of place or something like that. So sometimes people say, oh yeah, I have a trouble like it staying connected. The magnet is pretty strong, but uh, if it's not adjusted correctly, that could give you trouble. So the, the last portion I should mention is uh, folding the handlebars down. So basically you have a similar uh, safety lever, push the lever up, uh, open the latch, and you're gonna fold the handlebars down. Now in order to secure things, you do have a strap to secure the handlebars here. You can also remove the pedal as well uh, to give you a flat surface on the drive side of the bike. I should note also, I, I didn't do this specifically, but if you shift into the lowest gear, it would move the derailleur uh, into a, a safer position if you were uh, storing the bike on its side for some reason. But I should note that you can store the bike on the rear rack. So at this point, I can actually just take the bike and just wheel it back and just sit it up like this, which is, I think for some people, this might be an ideal uh, way to stow the bike. And you might have noticed that I was wheeling the bike, and that is actually something that that you can do. Um, it's a little easier to do it on this side without the pedal, but but the bike can can be wheeled around um, while it's in the folded position, which is really convenient uh, because it's probably not something you're going to want to lift and and carry around, but it is possible. So to unfold the bike, we're going to just reverse these same steps basically. So I'm going to undo the strap for the handlebars and fold the handlebars up, clip that back in place, and then I can pull the bike out like so. You should note that you really don't have to lift it. I think that uh, my natural inclination is to use like my strength and lift things up or that sort of thing, but, but you can do it with the, with the wheels on the ground. Um, so that's latched back in place. I'll just kind of push this strap back in place reposition the handlebars to so just open these levers up. Usually uh, you'll want these uh, grips to be relatively level and the brake levers, they should be angled down very slightly. If they're angled up too high, you can kind of hit your fingers on there. So just be mindful of that. And then I'll just put this back in position and clamp it back into place. And then, uh, reposition my saddle. I should note that there's uh, numbers on here and you could probably just kind of remember what your number is. Um, that might it, make it easier to adjust it into your position. But generally a good rule of thumb is to start somewhere in your hip area where the saddle height is uh, positioned there. And that's really it, you know, you're, you're unfolded and uh, really ready to ride again. So the tires on this bike are the Schwabi Big Apple. It's what's called a balloon tire. So it's uh, 
it's a wider tire and it's a little easier to run this tire at lower pressure, which can really add to the comfort and stability of the bike. They have pretty good puncture protection on here and Schwabi is a really great uh, tire manufacturer from Germany. They have nice uh, reflective sidewalls on here, 20 inch wheels front and rear. And then it has a quick release lever up on the fork with a, with a rigid fork uh, specifically on, on this bike. Also has some nice fenders as well. Let's check out the drivetrain. So this one, as it's the S10, has a 10-speed derailleur and cassette, specifically the Shimano Dior derailleur, whereas the Q9 has one less gear with the 9-speed derailleur and cassette, and that's the Shimano Olivio derailleur. Has a rapid-fire trigger shifter up front that makes it really easy to shift the gears and I think it's a nice pairing on this particular bike. I know some people were asking if they can get a belt drive on the Vectron and we've been talking with Turn and their product development people and that sort of thing and to my understanding it's very complicated and very challenging to do on this particular style of uh, frame so it's likely something that we won't really see on this bike but they have plenty of options if you did want to have a belt like the HSD or the GSD so something you might want to consider there. But let's check out the motor. For the motor on this one as the S10 has the generation 3 performance line motor 65 newton meters of torque really uh, plenty of power in this thing. Actually, I was riding it up some pretty big hills and uh, it can really handle that. And I think just the overall combination on this bike is, uh, is, is quite nice. And if you're looking for a folding bike with good power and just great quality components, this is a nice way to go. So as with the generation two, Vectron or version 2, it also has this generation 3 motor on it with the larger uh, chain ring. You have the nice integrated uh, chain guard here. And let's just check out the motor from the other side. I think you could see it a little bit better because it's kind of hidden behind this big chain ring here. Now the form factor of the motor is pretty much uh, the same as the previous version but just a little bit more power to it. As I said, the S10 has the performance line motor, 65 newton meters of torque, which is really how we generally measure power in these sort of cases. And then the Q9 has the active line plus, which is 50 newton meters of torque. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, a, a nice upgrade uh, for both of the particular models here. Now, the Bosch system uses a technology called pedal assist and basically what that means is it assists you as you pedal and it uses three different sensors which it takes readings a thousand times per second so it's sensing how fast you're pedaling how hard you're pedaling and how fast the bike is going based on all this information it provides assistance and you can change that assistance level up on the handlebars which I'll show you in a minute but basically you can ride it with no assistance and it does handle that very well because there's no resistance inside the motor but if you wanted to you can ride anywhere from eco mode at about 50-60% uh, assistance upwards of 300% assistance on the top level there. Let's check out the battery to see where this bike gets its power. Uh, another update to the Vectron frame is that they moved the battery position ever so slightly. Previously, it was a little bit difficult to access this charging port, but they just moved this up just a little bit so it's, the chain guard uh, doesn't interfere there. So I think a pre people will appreciate that, that slight update there. I should also note that both the Q9 and the S10 will come with the larger four amp charger. So it usually takes about four or so hours to charge the battery. You can charge it on the, bat the bike through this port here, or alternatively, you can remove the battery and charge the battery off the bike, and you're just gonna use that key lock here. I should note that the Bosch system uh, is 
is very safe. Uh, one of the things with a lithium ion battery, there can be some concerns about um, uh, fire or that sort of thing, but really uh, all Bosch systems are UL listed, meaning that they go through really extensive testing to make sure that there's really no concerns about uh, the, the battery having any sort of um, fire or whatever the case may be. Uh, for me, I think this is a really big deal and something that doesn't, isn't really mentioned enough because uh, most other companies don't do that because it's completely voluntary. But I really appreciate that Bosch takes that extra mile to ensure uh, that, that their products are very safe. So uh, kudos to them for that. Uh, should mention uh, range uh, when we're talking about the battery. So I'd say on the high level of assistance, you're probably looking at somewhere 25 to 30 miles where the low levels of assistance, probably upwards of 70 miles from the 500 watt hour battery. And you'll see a slight uh, decrease with the 400 watt hour battery, maybe uh, somewhere between uh, 20 to 60 miles, really depending on the assistance level. Although at the same time, when you think about it, the 400 watt hour is going to be with the active line plus a little bit less power. Uh, so you'll probably see a slightly increase in range there as well. But let's check out the display and you can see a little bit more how this all works. Both of the Vectrons come with the Bosch Purion display, which is a compact display, really fitting for a folding bike like this. It doesn't get in the way and it's pretty durable. To turn the display on, you're just going to tap the power button on the top here. It just takes a couple seconds for it to turn on. In the U.S., by default, it's going to be an off. In some other countries, they allow it to be in whatever the last assistance setting that you're in. But right now, this bike would ride just like a normal non-electric bike. But if you hit the plus button, you can change to the different assist levels. So the first level is Eco. It's a 60% boost tour mode, which is 140%, I think, and sport mode is like 200 or so percent, and then turbo is 300% at the top level of assistance. And at that point, it's pretty dramatic. So you could think of it in kind of rudimentary terms that you take one pedal revolution and the bike is going to take three on top. It's definitely more advanced and more seamless than that, but that's the basic idea. I should note that really the pedal assist on the Bosch system is very smooth and um, on this one in particular pretty powerful. I find it really to be pretty intuitive. That's something I think sometimes people get a little bit confused about. How does that work exactly? But it, it, it works really smoothly. So if you ever get an opportunity to test one, I highly recommend it. You have some other information on this screen as well. So you have the miles per hour, which can also be set to kilometers per hour. The battery life here, you have uh, five different bars at the moment, it's three out of five bars. You wanted to see some different information, you can hold the minus button, you can see some different details. So you have the tripometer. If you wanted to reset the tripometer, you just hold the plus and minus button down for a couple of seconds and you'll reset that there. Hold the minus button down again, you'll see the odometer. This is not uh, something that you can reset. It's actually information that's stored inside the motor and not adjustable. They hold it down one more time and you see the range and this is going to vary depending on what assist level you're in. So you could see an eco mode with three out of five bars. I should note that this could be like 2.4 or whatever. It's not as uh, precise although the range detail is a little bit more precise and with a 400 watt hour battery with the three out of five bars you can see how you can easily get upwards of 70 miles with the larger battery and a full battery at that but let's hold the minus button down one more time and get back into the just the different assist levels another feature on this display is if you hold the plus button down for a couple of seconds you'll activate the light I should note that this Headlight is also switchable up front here, but the tail light will always be on when the light is on from the display. The last detail I wanted to show is what's called walk assist, and you have this button under here. This will basically just allow you to push the bike along, make it a little bit easier if you're walking up a hill, that sort of thing, if the bike's loaded up. 
So you're just gonna tap the walk assist button and then hold the plus button and that will move the bike along at yeah, two, three miles an hour. I should note that you do have to be in a specific assist level in order to activate the walk assist, but it's a cool feature just to give you a little help when you need it. For the brakes on the bike, we have the Magura MT4. They're hydraulic disc brakes and, and pretty powerful. It's a two finger lever, which is adjustable. At the moment, they're kind of pushed out a little bit, but if you adjust this little screw here, you can pull them in closer, say if you have smaller hands or that sort of thing. You can also adjust the angle as well by loosening this clamp here. I should mention, as I mentioned before, you just want to make sure that you can comfortably throw your hand out and grab the lever. I think that that's an important safety feature. The shifter on here, as I mentioned before, is the Shimano Dior. It's a rapid fire trigger shifter. And usually you don't want to change the gears when you're not pedaling, but in this case, I'm gonna do this just to uh, show this as an example. But you can change to three gears going down with your thumb here and usually you'll use your pointer finger or trigger finger on the gears going up to a higher gear and that you can just do one at a time but you can do it pretty rapidly and hence the name rapid fire so i'm going to push it back into that same gear that it was in there and you could see this little indicator as you're shifting the gears it will change which is pretty nice so I changed it back to the gear that it was in because I don't want to be in a position where uh, I'm starting out in the incorrect gear and then the, the bike has trouble kind of forcing through the gears. It could prematurely wear the gears down and that's not ideal. You could see these really nice ergon grips while we're up here. Uh, these are the GP1 grips, all black, which really go with the bike pretty well. And nice little bell that comes with the bike as well. For the calipers up front, we have the Magura MT4 dual piston calipers, really plenty of stopping power. Again, they're hydraulic with 160 millimeter rotors. So as with the generation two of the Vectron, this has the same upgraded Atlas rack with the 59 pound weight capacity, which is a bit higher than what you'll generally find on even a standard size bike, but certainly a folding bike. They do this in part, I believe, to be able to accommodate a child seat. Now, you can fit a Yep Maxi seat really uh, just out of the box, but it also can fit the Yep Neck seat, which clamps onto the sides here. There's also these nice little extrusions on the rack, which hold the pannier in place really well. Now, I should mention that it can be sometimes challenging to run the child seat with the pannier, but it can be possible as well. And the top of the rack is also compatible with their click fix system, which you can clamp uh, like a basket on the top, that sort of thing. So all sorts of different uh, accessory options. The front has some great accessory options as well. You can add this luggage uh, truss mount and you can mount a bag up there, or mount baskets, all that sort of stuff. So I appreciate those little details which really extend the functionality and utility of this bike. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really excited about the updates that turned into this bike. If you have experience with the previous version of the Vectron, maybe you wanna share them. You know, I know that there's a lot of people out there that have this bike and really love it. And you know, these nice little improvements just make it even just a little bit better. Um, yeah, so um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. If you're interested in getting one of these bikes, feel free to reach out to us. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Well, see you soon.